The resurgence of coronavirus cases is pausing reopening plans for many states, delaying an already shaky economic recovery for the country. Now banking giant Goldman Sachs is slashing its third quarter forecast and warning consumer spending will likely stall in July and August. John Last is the president of the Sports and Leisure Research Group. He's joining me now. And uh, John, you're doing a really interesting study as you kind of are trying to gauge where Americans are as they're looking at reopening and trying to get back to normal. We've seen this bubble of optimism that appears to have burst when it comes to a quick rebound in the U.S. economy. Tell us about what you've found. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we, we began tracking this uh, in partnership with Rock Solutions and Engages back in March. And we saw a very steady increase in people who were ready to re-engage in a variety of leisure activities. Uh, and that has really eroded over the last two waves. We do this every other week. And basically, we've seen people's overall consumer confidence kind of dip right back to where we were at the end of March. So what type of leisure activities are, are we talking about? Restaurants? Are we talking about sporting events, gyms, movies? What kind of things? We really cover a very wide array. We, we, we do everything from tra all the different travel sectors, air, hotels, casinos. Uh, we've looked at sporting, live sporting events with regularity. We look at restaurants and even looking uh, so far as people's willingness to go back to the dentist or to doctor's offices. So we've, we've really captured a, a lot of different activities and track that on an ongoing basis since we initiated the study. And so what are people telling you about their concerns when it comes to reengaging in those activities? It's interesting. We, we've really found a kind of dichotomous response. There's There's been a big segment of people that from the get-go have been just ready to go without any further assurances. But almost equal to that are the percentage of folks, it's about a third, who will not get back uh, to these normal activities absent a vaccine or proven medical protocol. And then there's another smaller group that is looking for perhaps um, some more localized assurances, be it from government or medical authorities. So it's been very interesting and consistent throughout our, our consumer pulsing that we've had these three very consistent sentiments. And, and, and the composition of those within those sentiments uh, has, been, has seen some shifting as well. And of course, you're, you're doing this. You have, I know, a lot of um, sort of trade organizations who are subscribing to this. They, of course, want to know where people's heads are at any given moment as you do this every two weeks. Right now, I think there are a lot of companies that are thinking, OK, if we bring people back, certainly they want to bring people back to work, right? They want to get things Absolutely. reopened. They want the, the they they need the money to survive. And there are some people who, of course, want to get back to work. But as you mentioned, not all of them. So as you have companies who are worried about what does it mean to basically tell our employees they have to come back to work? What are you finding among workers? It's, it's an interesting set of responses from workers. First of all, there's a real division in people's perspectives, and that's driven a lot by age. So as one might surmise, the, the older workers are a little bit more hesitant to going back. Uh, we're finding that workers are saying, for example, if, if we're going to go back to the office and we're still going to have meetings on Zoom or Skype, well, why are we going back to the office in the first place? Um, I think you know, even amongst those people who are very gung-ho and ready to go back to the office, they are recognizing that there is a very reasonable and large group of people that are not comfortable. And, and I think we've seen throughout the study that there is a, a real strong support for continued work from home where that can be possible. So, so it, it's going to be very interesting to see how companies ultimately deal with that. And then there's always the liability issues that, that uh, have sure. also kind of their heads within this. So, yeah, the liability issue and, and what your numbers seem to be showing is that there's reason for companies to be concerned about that. Absolutely. Um, you know, obviously, the, the possibility of pursuing legal action is a lot easier said than done. But we've been tracking people's sentiment to actually pursue legal action, whether it be against their employers or other businesses. And, and, and that, you know, what we're hearing from that is a real concern. There's about a third of folks that say that they would consider it if they were to go back and, and then somebody else were to be diagnosed with COVID-19 and then they caught it. We even find that, you know, in those circumstances where people say that they would be signing uh, liability release waivers, that they still might pursue legal action. So that's obviously caused a, a lot of uh, reasonable concern in the business community amongst those subscribing to the to the barometer and, uh, and, and even for people like myself in running a small business. John, thanks so much for walking uh, us through this. It's just so important to kind of see where everyone's heads are on this. And we thank you for sharing it with us. Thanks so much for having me. Just into CNN, the publishing date for Mary Trump's book has been moved